On December 20th, 2009, Brittany Murphy was found dead inside her Hollywood Hills mansion, just a matter of weeks before her con artist husband died under similar circumstances. Was it pills? Toxic mold? Or did the U.S. government assassinate two people close to a Department of Homeland Security whistleblower? This week on Death and Entertainment. Live from Los Angeles. 911, what is your emergency? Here in Hollywood now. Two counts of murder. Injury and death. Oh my God. Shocking new details that has stunned the entertainment world. Um, this makes me a little nervous. The hair stood up on my arms. Just like in the movies. Ah! What do you call this thing anyway? Death in entertainment. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Death and Entertainment. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. My name is Kyle Plouffe. My name is Mark. I'm Sam Mark. You're just saying Mark today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm Alejandro. I think people understand now. We don't need to say our last names. Yeah. What do you think? I'm still gonna. Okay. Today, I'll try out just saying Alejandro. <laughs> yeah, I think people know you Like are. Fabio. <laughs> yeah. Or Bono. Like Madonna. Well, we're going to talk about Madonna later, hey. so we don't want to get too deep into that. Oh, my goodness. And this episode is taking us to December 20th, 2009. Ooh. First, I'm going to start with a news flash. Okay. An Italian jury convicted American student Amanda Knox of murder. She shouldn't have done that. And the United States and four other nations brokered a climate deal. Oh, nice. Yeah, that went well. It's as thin as your skin. Oh. Yeah. The atmosphere, William Shatner said. And uh, enough about global warming. That's boring. Let's get to the good stuff, like the movies. Hey. Hey. Number three, Sherlock Holmes. Hey. A movie that nobody remembers. <laughs> is this the, the about. Johnny Depp one or the John, funny one? Johnny Depp. You're thinking of Benny and June. Well, they're both like no kinda... Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Johnny yeah they're they're Depp. two they're, different they're, people. They're, no, they're like the same guy. Oh, Not okay. at all. Yeah, yeah. One is a drug addict, and one's a drunk. <laughs> <laughs> So number two at the box office, Alvin and the Chipmunks, the Squeak was oh classic Squeakle. movie, yeah, and Squeakle that caused uh, quite a lot of excitement using that term, the Squeak A lot of jokes were made. Oh yeah, great ones. It was the most joked about sequel title since it was the new joke break title. into yeah, Electric, Electric Boogaloo. Boogaloo. Yep, like Godfather, the Squeak Yeah, and number one at the Depp. box. Johnny Depp office was Avatar. Whoa, I, you know, I love this movie. Or as Arnold Schwarzenegger pronounced it at the Golden Globes at the time, Avatar. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> California. <laughs> Avatar. Did you guys see it in the theater in 3D? Yeah, I did. I saw it for the first time like a year ago. In 3D? No. On TV during the pandemic, I was like, I guess I'll watch this bullshit. There's nothing else to do. Why would you watch it not in 3D? I mean, do you have 3D glasses for my TV? No, but you don't have to watch it then. You missed the boat. Yeah. What, you, you burned through Tiger King by I, then? Yeah, through Tiger King. Every serial killer documentary was done. And then Peacock hadn't come out with all their stuff yet. So, Have you seen a movie in 3D ever? Yeah, it makes me go cross-eyed. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm, I don't cool. enjoy it. Other issues. Yeah, yeah. there's so a lot a going on. It's a mental thing with yeah. you. So now we're going to music. Number three, Bad Romance by Lady Gaga. Oh, Perhaps one of the most annoying songs ever created. I don't even know why she exists as a person. That was, so, it brings me right back to that time. Anywhere you walked in the city, you were hearing Bad Romance by Lady Gaga. Yeah. Annoying people would sing along. She called them her little monsters, the fans. Ugh. You know, she Lady Gaga, as recent as 2013, did a collaboration with R. Kelly. Mm. Oh, wow. Alejandro's one of the monsters over here. Yeah. No, I just know that. Uh, you know a lot of information about I know this. that story. <laughs> yeah. This deep dive we're taking. Yeah, in. as I said, that I hated that yeah. song. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The fans are called the monsters. I'm not a monster, okay? I'm I, mean, like, I know, oh, I know 85 facts about I it. I hate it so much. <laughs> oh, no, you caught me. I'm a big fan. Huge. Yeah. This yeah. artist you hate, you know a lot. Yeah, about. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Number two, TikTok. Not to be confused with the social platform, the Hello. actual song by uh, Kesha. Not to be confused with a clock. Um, I, I typed that. I was wondering, like, it probably had. It probably was inspired the the app. So Kesha deserves a payment of some sort. I don't know. Royalties. Yeah. It could be. I always thought Kesha until like a few years ago was Keisha. 
I knew Kesha was a thing, but I, her music just was just kind of missed me. I, I, didn't I never heard any of her songs. Oh, no, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, big Kesha oh! fan over here. Oh, yeah. he's, he just pulled out a roll that just kind of unfurled of all the information he has about Kesha. I was going to say at the time she spelled her name with a dollar, dollar sign, sign yeah. instead of an S, but then I know you guys would accuse me of knowing too much about Kesha. <laughs> <laughs> Number one at this time is Empire State of Mind. New by Jay Z and featuring Alicia Keys. Another annoying song. It's a great song, but it, it makes absolutely <laughs> great no sense. Song. <laughs> Concrete jungle where dreams are made of. He that could, doesn't even make sense. At some point in the middle of it, he just goes, Rest in peace, Bob Marley. And you're like, What Rest the fuck peace, is the context Marley. of that? Don't worry about it. He didn't die in New York either. He, he had nothing to do no, with it. No, he New probably York. saw New York on a map. Yeah, I think he went for a jog <laughs> there one time. And was this inspired by Billy Joel's Empire State of Mind? He did his own. That was New York maybe State of Mind. That was New York, yeah. yeah. So he got around that by yeah. calling it Empire, Empire State of Mind. So dumb. Smart, actually. New York. Because yeah. State he, of Mind. that song was a big hit. It was a big hit, but it was just dumb, and I, I hate it existing. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> it got I really annoying. Like the song. <laughs> yeah. No, but that time was annoying. You had stuff like Bad Romance by La any Lady Gaga song, and I'm not even going to mention the one that I share a name with, but it was all horrible. Well, it was it was all of the U U.S. like artistry just sputtering out, and we're just catching the last gasp of like yeah. of good stuff that that came yeah. out. And remember the other big song that year was by the Black Eyed Peas. Oh. Tonight's gonna be a good. Oh, night. They play that at every like that was uh, so um, annoying. Like sports games, like sports yeah. games. You know, it worked well for like morning show commercials. Every, I used to work um, at like a catering place uh, in Santa Monica, and we do all these bar mitzvahs, and they play that song probably fifteen times oh, throughout yeah. the entire. Oh, bar it's bar the bar mitzvah, mitzvah, mitzvah song yeah. of the century. <laughs> yeah. Oprah, I think, played it. Get yeah, her. of course. Well, big, like, final season. She's not going to throw on Radiohead or something. You know. <laughs> oh, they perform <laughs> live. <laughs> Everybody. Oprah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a widow. <laughs> My favorite band, Radiohead. <laughs> yeah. Radiohead. <laughs> Oprah's British now. My favorite band. I'm British now. <laughs> I'm from <laughs> Porchester. <laughs> I'm you got a buggy, and you got a buggy, <laughs> yeah. and you got a buggy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's get let's get down in the dirty here as far as Brittany Murphy goes. Dirty, dirty. I'm ready. This is her background. Okay, so she was born November 10th, 1977 to parents Sharon and father Angelo Bertolotti. I've been trying to practice saying that name. Mr. Her Bertolotti. <laughs> Mr. <Bar> <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> Mr. Bur Bertolotti. <laughs> Can we play that song one more time? <laughs> Wait, what song? Mr. Dabalina. <laughs> There's a through line of this song in our podcast. For some reason, we can't we can't shake it. Okay. Yo, man, I don't think they heard you. Won't you tell them what your name is? Mr. Dabalina, Mr. Bob Dabalina, Mr. Dabalina, Mr. Bob Dabalina. Mr. There we go. There's our fix for the day. Oh, yeah. And I could actually start programming that into the thing. So, like, if a name sounds like it, I could just hit it. And just oh, go, yeah. Mr. Dabalina. <laughs> the birth of our Zoo Morning Radio Show right here. <laughs> hey! Hello! So, what I have right now is... Um, Apparently, her father, Angela, was heavily involved in organized crime. That's the Ooh. word that was used by Mother Sharon. He was in and out of jail uh, while Brittany was growing up. He was busted in 1975 for trying to sell marijuana and cocaine to a federal agent Oof, um, can't in do that. Florida. That's yeah. the only person you don't want to sell that stuff to. Yeah. And he did it. Tim Allen did Tim Allen, that yeah. Well. Uh, <laughs> time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, more big, cocaine. Big time coke dealer yeah, and yeah. star of the Santa Claus. You can do both, folks. Don't tell anyone you can. Um, so her parents split when she was two years old. Her dad went to jail for that drug deal when she was five. Murphy and her mother moved to Edison, New Jersey shortly after the divorce. This is actually disputed like many things in this story because on IMDb, it says the father moved them back to Edison to be around his kids from previous marriages. Ooh. But Sharon says she just moved there on her own with Brittany to live by themselves and to set her up in like plays and get her started huh. and acted and stuff. Who knows? 
Yeah, so it was around this time that Brittany became interested in acting and performing. And at age five in a Manhattan restaurant, she actually went up to a table with George Siegel and Burt Reynolds and told them that she was going to be a huge star. Oh, wow. Also George like Siegel them. and Burt Reynolds. Yeah, like what are they hanging out yeah, together? What are they <laughs> talking about? <laughs> yeah, what are, they, uh, what are they doing together? <laughs> <laughs> to encourage uh, Britney's talents, uh, Murphy's mother enrolled her in Vern Fowler School of Dance and Theater in Colonial, New Jersey. Yeah, so I guess that was like a big regional kind of like dance and acting school. By the time she was eight, she had determined that she wanted to be a huge star. But obviously she knew at five also when she told George Siegel and Burt Reynolds that. <laughs> That's quite the foresight yeah. for a five-year-old. For a five-year-old? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can barely even talk at that I point. I think at that age I was saying things like, more ice cream, yeah. please. Also, when I was 18 and, <laughs> yeah, and now. <laughs> <laughs> so I think... Very conflicting information comes out from her bio because I think her mom kind of told this narrative about Britney always wanted to do it herself. Yeah, I didn't mm. push her. I didn't do anything. It was always her going to George Siegel's table. So they spun this kind of fake narrative that kind of comes up over and over. Other people shared that narrative, though, that Britney yeah. really wanted, wanted to, to do, do it herself. Yeah. Some of the other like dance instructors at this yeah. school and in her high school and stuff said, no, no, no. It was Britney, but I think Britney was maybe coached to like to yes. spin this narrative herself Possibly. also. Yeah. She allegedly started pushing her mother to help her get headshots, hire a manager, and then often drive into Manhattan for auditions. Um, when she was 12, her mother finally relented, allegedly, but th she was acting the entire time. So some of the yeah. stuff in the bio doesn't really match up with like, you know, real Yeah, I think shit. she was doing more local stuff than commercial. I guess so. Yeah. There's a big documentary out, which we're getting to yeah, yeah, we'll later, but get more one detail. of the things they say is there was some production she did. And she just came out swinging, like yeah. song and dance, Mrs. Broadway. And yeah. So and she it, forgot one of the songs and then made one up off the top is, of her this head. This is a common thread, actually, in her in her career also, like forgetting lines and like oh, dropping really? shit. She naturally just had an issue with, with remembering right. lines and stuff, which is tough. I, I always found that tough. I, yeah. I didn't act in really anything besides <laughs> stupid sketches where I played a guy with uh, spatulas for hands. <laughs> so I'm not someone to, to ask about this. What Mark's referring to is there's a sci-fi picture parody he made where, for channel 101 which is dan yeah. Harmon's channel yeah yeah and where yeah, in Harman. the future people have spatulas for hands yeah because because it's a post-apocalyptic society where um functionally that's how uh people devolved into people with spatulas right for hands. <laughs> it's because just easier. people ate so much maybe and so then the people that were left with the normal quote-unquote hands yeah. with fingers they were looked on as the freaks of yeah. society yeah, as like the slaves they were called story. handies Hand yeah. Candies, yeah. right. So almost immediately after Britney starts <laughs> acting and stuff and like getting a manager and doing auditions, she starts landing jobs for TV commercials. Um, from there, she began making brief appearances on sitcoms such as Murphy Brown and Boy Meets World. And I think she was doing that by like going back and forth from the East to West Coast and like doing like pilot season and, and getting small stuff. Yeah. I saw that clip on YouTube randomly. From what? From when Murphy I... Brown? From Boy Meets World, in oh, one of really? my random, you know, YouTube deep dives, and it, suddenly I'm like, oh my god, that's Brittany Murphy. Yeah. She did have a a presence. She did. She was Always. a good. She was a speaking of George Siegel, she was a great comedic actress. Where she, absolutely, like, she really stuck out in the scene and stuff, and she's kind of goofy in good ways, and she was kind of playing herself a lot of the time. I feel like. After um, doing pilot seasons and auditioning and stuff, she got a role on this TV show called Drexel's Class. This was huge because she landed an actual pilot, which was continually going and not just small bit parts. A pilot with an unfortunate name. Yeah, that's a weird. Drexel's yeah. class. Yeah, it's weird. not exactly nine hundred two one zero. No, <laughs> but it was actually starring Dabney Coleman, who played Drexel. Really, the Dabney Coleman. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. The um, the from not to be confused. Clifford, among other movies. Yeah, not my favorite. But Clifford. He's Charles Grodin's boss with the oh, toupee. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, I, I never knew what his name was. He was in Tootsie as yeah. well, and he's still with us. Oh, thank God. Um, he's in this room, I mean. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, he's right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> so in 1991, Murphy and her mother relocate to Los Angeles. Any I've... parallel between Murphy Brown and the name Murphy? Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're like <laughs> the detective who's like asking weird questions oh is there anything there and they're like no forget i said anything oh we did yeah so drexel's class with dabney coleman 
big TV show. So she did that for a couple of years when she wasn't working on set. Uh, she spent her time studying at John Burroughs High School in Burbank, California. Right around the corner. So I that was, show was on for a couple seasons. Yeah, a couple seasons. Oh, I thought it was a pilot that never took. Um, let me see. No, I don't know anything about it. I just had never heard of it. That's I, why I, I assume. Drixel's... I think you're right. I think it went like a season and a half. Okay. And it wasn't really- Kind of came and went. Kind of came and went. It got 18 episodes, I think. Okay, yeah. so that's about a season. Yeah, one season, 18 episodes. Yeah. So for some reason, I thought it was like a longer show. But Jason I... Biggs was in this. Really? Anyone else? Uh, Dabney Coleman, Randy Graff. Oh, I love Randy Graff. Um, Never heard of him. I think it's a woman. Daniel. Uh, never heard of her. <laughs> Daniel Day-Lewis? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Wait, are you serious? That's one of those things you like. It could sound. <laughs> hey, Phil Keller wrote for them. Oh, really? Yeah. UCLA. What's his name? Oh, Matthew Lawrence from uh, the famous Lawrence Brothers. Yeah, Phil Keller. So uh, this was quite great guy. One of my instructors who? at UCLA. Is it oh. a who? So who's who? And maybe who cares? Um, <laughs> yeah. So she was in and out of uh, John Burroughs High School, which uh, actually a friend of mine, the great Mitchell Roche, who's a, a great comedian improviser in LA, told me that he went to uh, to high school with her. Wow. Um, and she was kind of in and out of high school. She didn't really spend a lot of time there, yeah. but like enough. And she did some school plays to actually make an imprint there with with Mitchell and some other people, I guess. After this and after like continuing to like do the auditions and everything, she got this role in Clueless. This was in 1995. Um, this is when she finally entered like the national spotlight as like a huge actress because Clueless was like huge. It was a surprise hit. It grossed more than $11 million in its first weekend. It was a phenomenon. Yeah, yeah, it was a phenomenon. It was one of those things that entered the pop culture yeah, yeah, landscape. Exactly. The zeitgeist, if you will. Yes. It did. Um, so she was like a suddenly a huge star. And we got our next clip. My name's Amy Heckerling. I'm the writer-director of Clueless, which was the first movie that Brittany Murphy was in. We saw a lot of people for the part of Ty. And um, when Brittany came in, she was just genuine. She just felt like a sweet girl who kind of didn't fit in with the others and was just trying and being nice, but like was lost in this world. And that was exactly what I was looking for. You don't think that we mesh well. <laughs> I was like, why am I even listening to you to begin with? You're a virgin who can't drive. Oh, that was way harsh, Ty. You're a virgin who can't drive. The way she delivers it just like gives you chills. It's like, whoa. I loved her performance. So she went on to star in at least one more movie or TV show every year, basically, until she passed away. She just kept going and going and going. I think she, maybe she actually worked too much. In 90s... Too much? I think that might have been her down, downfall. That's part of my hypothesis here. Okay. So in 1997, she got King of the Hill, which is uh, the well-known as the uh, the oldest daughter in it. Yep. Um, she also did smaller movies like Bong Water in Phoenix with <laughs> Anthony LaPaglia. So she like... <laughs> LaPaglia. Oh, okay. Rolled doll. You know, I'm a big fan of Mr. LaPaglia. You're a LaPaglia head. Yeah. Did you know he's Australian? I did. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah. thinking it. I was shocked by that. Part. I thought he was just from like, you know, yeah, like, White Plains, New York or something. Yeah, he like, seems like he could be on The Sopranos kind yeah. of thing. Um, towards the end of the 90s, uh, Britney started crushing it. Uh, she was getting roles like Drop Dead Gorgeous, Girl Interrupted, and this continued into the 2000s with big roles like Uptown Girls, Sin City, Just Married, and 8 Mile. All around, she was considered a great actor who was pleasant to work with, though there were, again, the occasional instances of her being late and forgetting lines, but nothing unforgivable. Um, it was after 8 Mile, she actually bought this huge house in the Hollywood Hills at 1895 Rising Glen Road. Oh, the address. Yeah. It's well it's documented in the, in the documentary, too, so yeah. I don't feel bad uh, divulging it out. So she bought this house from Britney Spears for around three and a half million dollars, I think it was. Oh, wow. What, just because um, they're both named Britney? Yeah, which is weird. Uh, there's other weird stuff that will come later about the house. I have a whole chunk to talk about that. It was just kind of this huge palatial, like, it looks like the house they just give you if you made it in Hollywood, basically. Yeah. <laughs> it just looks like the the final kind of house there, final boss house. Um <laughs> 
she supposedly bought the house for just her and her mom, um, I guess, in also the hopes that she was thinking of getting married and kind of settling down at this kind of huge kind of five bedroom house. It seemed like she was very driven to get certain things accomplished, you know, like act in New York, move to Hollywood, become a huge famous uh, star, which she had. And I think her next step was to kind of get married and have kids and all that stuff. Yes. As far as her romance life, she didn't really date until she was 21. Then all of a sudden she had several like long relationships with Ashton Kutcher, um, who met on that movie uh, Just Married. And Kutcher? Ashton Kutcher. Isn't yeah, it that, Kutcher? That's definitely Kutcher. I, I thought it was Kutcher. Okay. The Kutch. Mark, uh, Mark has the creative pronunciations. He does. Yeah. So she got engaged to, to Kutcher. Um, she actually wore the ring after the movie, which was kind of like tacky. Yeah. You know, she was kind of promoting the movie too, and she was really engaged. Just married, That's allegedly. Funny. Yeah. So at this time, yeah, she was like kind of looking to settle down, you know, meet someone. I don't know. A lot of stuff was going on. She was engaged to a Hollywood talent manager named uh, Jeff Quaniance, um for four months in 2000. Somehow I feel like that's not the pronunciation. <laughs> this name, uh, I'll let you it's, look at um, it. How would you, yeah, yeah. How would you pronounce that? All right, it, it's not something you have to focus on too long. Um, that's not easy one. That's not like uh, Kutcher. Kutcher. Exactly. Okay. They were engaged for four months. So she had a lot of like these long relationships that kind of led to an engagement that didn't really, you know, kind of fizzled out. She was actually in a relationship with Eminem for a while after they did uh, 8 Mile. Mm -hmm. That kind of fizzled out too. It was around this time. Um, after 2005's Little Black Book, that she kind of hit a slump in her career. She was kind of like aimless, alone. And then on came along this guy, Simon Monjack, Ugh. who is this kind of big British monster of a person who is just kind of a drag on her entire life. I feel like we need to create a, a death and entertainment shit list. Yeah. He would definitely be on it. This yeah. guy is up there. John Landis. Yeah, Landis, <laughs> Landis definitely way up the there. The two uh, detectives that framed our boy, Juan Catalan. Yeah. Yes. This is the weirdest thing. So she kind of was looking for someone to straighten out her life, blah, 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 and she thought this guy was it. I think it was the, it could have been the British voice. Uh, you know, the, the, I honestly the think it's just not having a dad. I think it's very really? easy for women to be taken advantage of by people if they didn't have like a stable male character in their life. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he was willing to control her, do yeah. everything for yeah. her. Yep. Yeah. I guess he filled some weird void and it was just unfortunate. Like she had the void and it's like a cancer coming into that void and mm -hmm. just being the worst thing that mm -hmm. happened that ever happened to her. There's been some questions. Uh, so Simon Monjack, just to give some background about him, he was an alleged producer, screenwriter, makeup artist, which Ugh. is kind of like the cliche of everyone who, who moves to L.A. I'm a DJ, producer, rap artist, architect. Like everyone has like 18 titles they call themselves on their business cards. Usually a hairstylist or a makeup artist. They look kind of cool, funky. Yeah. This guy is a disheveled, greasy mess. Yeah. I thought he was going to be good looking. <laughs> He's a <laughs> fat, monstrous yeah. you thought he was drug be addict. Good well, you think Brittany Murphy, like she's not going to settle so, for some fat he looks loser. Like a oh, corpse. yes, she did. Yeah. yeah. Looks like he forgot to lie down. It looks like he died. They dug him back up and then kind of hit him with calipers. <laughs> and, he, and like he's up for a second until he goes back down. <laughs> not to be mean or anything, but <laughs> not to be he, mean. <laughs> you know, whether you think he's attractive or not, it's like he is disheveled, grossly overweight. Yeah, he yeah. was less bloated when he died. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, let, let me get into him because I have a lot of like uh, facts about. Fuck this him, he sucks. So the biggest thing he had ever done, he called himself a screenwriter. And whenever you see like a, a story about him, it says screenwriter. You know, Simon producer. Uh, you know, Monjack. People call him actually Conjack. That was a little term they had for him. Oh, uh, hello, hello, yeah. Conjack. Wordplay. So he actually had one story by credit on the movie Factory Girl. I saw Sienna that. Miller. I saw that on IMDb. Yeah. The credit. It's funny. <laughs> I noticed the credit. You know, he didn't get uh, written by, yeah. which is the, the main one you want. Do you know the reason? I, I'll tell you what, I, what my theory is. They don't say it exactly, but he was allegedly a bad screenwriter. He sucked. He probably. I would imagine so. He probably got hired for this job. And uh, there was like some WJ arbitration uh, that knocked him w down. What? WGA, oh. the Writers Guild of Association. Yeah. So what happens if you kind of get hired for, to write a script? If you're really not good, 
they'll bump you down to story by credit, which is a, which is a much lesser credit. But yeah. why would they hire him if he has no example? Because he bullshitted good. his way into it. Right, that's true. That's everyone, what he did with a lot of people. Everyone that was conned by him said he was very convincing. For you some get reason. if you get him in a room, he starts you know bringing up all these stories. He says he's like a billionaire. It's the accent. It's I the think. accent. Yeah. He, well, the lies. Said so he had cancer. Terminal said, cancer. I wish I had a British accent sometimes because you can be taken much more seriously yeah. as a narrator, just things you say. He told people he had cancer. Yeah. Uh, he told his mother he had cancer because his dad died of a brain tumor when he was 29. Oh, wow. Um, no, he got the, the brain tumor at 29. He was dead like five years later, I think, just to correct myself. And so Simon told people that he had a brain tumor also. Oh, my God. And then God. he told Jeez. people in order to cure it. It's um, my tumor now. <laughs> in order to cure it, he went to the north of Africa, and he got this brand new treatment in which you're treated by injecting shark fin juice into you. Shark cartilage. Shark cartilage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> which cures a brain tumor. And this was like some ploy he was using to get money out of his mom, who had money left over uh, from the dad dying, because he was uh, the dad had some money. He worked in London, and like he was able to kind of accumulate some wealth, and yeah. they had a little bit of money. But Simon fucking blew it all. He would just like be a playboy around Paris, London, and he had a baby in each city, and he was like setting up franchises in Europe. But he something. really had a baby in each city. Oh yeah. When you see like the way he was acting after Britney died and all that, it seems like a loner. Yeah, like, I never imagined he had kids. Yeah. I think he goes on these spurts. I, we see, you see that in the documentary too, where he like wines and dines these women and just kind of charms them off their feet or something, and, and then like, never talks to them again. And then never, yeah. yeah. And there's a moment they said one of the girls had a huge ring on her finger. Yeah. In your estimation, do you think that was fake? Well. Later in the documentary, there's a bunch of jewelry that uh, right. si Simon had bought Brittany. And then uh, the mom takes it to an appraiser. And the appraiser goes, this is all fake. Yeah, because they were. she's like, she's got nothing to give you after she passed away. And she's like, well, I have all this jewelry. I'll just yeah. cash this in and, you know, be yeah. able to live. And they were like, this is all fake. All and she took it. it to a second appraiser. And yep. he goes, this is very fake. Yeah. <laughs> it's worse than fake. Get yeah. this yeah. out of here. <laughs> yeah. It's actually <laughs> making and, me sick. Yeah, in fact, <laughs> it's making my other jewelry lose value just being in the <laughs> yeah, same just room. being in this place. <laughs> It shows a pattern. I was just saying yeah. that he's just a scam artist and like money all the time. He's just like, this is how he wines and dines women by by faking this uh, very nice jewelry. He had a knack for doing that. So people all of a sudden wondering, you know, who is this guy, Simon? Why is he in her life and so forth? Um, people thought it was for money. Some people thought it was for citizenship because he was actually going to get kicked out of the country for his visa running out or both. Um, he was basically broke at this time. In 2005, he weirdly was arrested for credit card fraud in Virginia, UK, but the charges were later dropped. However, one year later in 2006, Coots Bank sued him after he had been evicted from four homes and four. they sued him for $470,000. <laughs> That's it? Y yeah. That seems like a, not a lot for They probably just want to write him off or something. Yeah. yeah. But I think he was just like running up a lot of bills and stuff and just not paying stuff. And it's just, just, yeah, that shows you how much of a bullshitter he is. Like, who needs four homes? And it's just amazing to me. This guy is going back and forth to LA, Paris, UK, and just kind of like throwing all this money around that he doesn't have. Yeah. That's Maybe. what I was going to ask you. What's up? Did he have money to move around all these times he was conning people, or did he not have money ever? Yeah, that's that's the question. I think he just pieced together money in like you know in getting loans, faked it, getting in credit cards and stuff. Money he just from took rich out. people, I, his I, parents. I think because his dad died so young, he just figured he was maybe living on borrowed time and just kind of figured live life to the fullest while he could. He was right about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very borrowed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> About um, to expire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're coming to collect. So after he started dating Britney, he started taking over her career, basically. Um, he eventually took full control over her life. He didn't allow her to have a phone anymore, and he ripped out all the landlines at oh. 1895 Rising Glen. A little uh, throwback to Brian Laundrie's playbook. Yeah, it sounds a little petito-y. Yes, very petito-y. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, the other thing I was going to mention is very unclear when they first met. 
One story is that they met when she uh, read a script to his in 2007 and called him while she was on a shoot in Tokyo. She's but like, that's the worst script I've ever written. Yeah, I need to talk to this guy. You want to get a drink? <laughs> this is unintelligible. I want to meet you. You're also the greasiest, ugliest motherfucker <laughs> well, I've ever seen. The reason why that made Let's go on a date. The reason why that made sense to me is because she's reading something and talking to him on the phone and not seeing him in mm, person right, the first the- time they meet. So in 2008 interview with The Post, Simon Monjack claimed to have fallen in love with Brittany during a photo shoot while she was there in her teens, telling writer Matt Donnelly, I was very patient. This implies that Moonjack may have first met Murphy sometime before 1997. Yeah. Like, what? He's been Moonjacking it to yeah, her since, it's, since 1997. <laughs> but, but he implied he met her I like teenager. Moonjack better. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's an alien. Yeah. No, but yeah, they're gross. Gross. Gross and weird. Like, what the fuck is that? I was patient. Literally everything. He about said he this met guy. he said he met her in 97. Yeah. That's like Michael Jackson saying when he first met Lisa Marie when she was like six years old or something yeah exactly and um, then they married her she came backstage <laughs> yeah <laughs> either whatever bullshit story it was they never left each other's side um except for the time that he was incarcerated by u.s immigration services for an expired visa so uh, he did a little time and while they were dating while they were dating yeah okay Imagine that, you know, this fucking mm-hmm. slob that makes no money is just like mooching off you. Slob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, just just says, hey, I got to take some time away from this because I got to go to prison. Um, yeah, that's just. So eventually after he gets out of prison, they get married on May 5th, 2007. They're married by a rabbi at the home. In oh, La- is she Jewish? I don't know who's oh, Jewish in this. That was now. the other big question. I saw in the documentary there was like a lot of stars of David and stuff, but I don't know. I, I think, think that explains is. it. Oh, he is. Yeah. Okay, he is. So she converted for him. I guess so. They didn't say that. Like, or they, just straight up lied. They they lie about everything. This whole mm, this couple It's very right. strange. There's no friends or family at the wedding. There's only like employees and his chauffeur is his best man or something. Sharon, the mom wasn't there. Sharon, no, Sharon, the mom okay. was there. She's like. This is like the tree. She's always yeah, getting yeah, jealous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> always lurking. Um, so. Hey, uh, you want to um, run these Letterman clips? Yeah, go for it. Fire it up, Charlie. Let's go. So this is uh, actually when she went on and David Letterman um, after she did 2002's uh, Eight Mile with Eminem. Welcome back. Thank you for having me back. It's fun to have you here. It's good to be here. Yeah, how have things been? Good, I guess, huh? Yeah, real nice. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, I've been talking about this, uh, the movie, Giggling. the Eight Mile thing. They had, it was a premiere last night? It was last night. In, in Los Angeles? Yes, it was a big hoop de doo yeah. I mean... Was it a hoop de doo or a whoop de doo it was, it was a hoop de doo I'd say, because it was hoopla uh-huh. and a whoop de doo mixed together. <laughs> it was pretty exceptional. Uh-huh. I mean, it, it was almost like, the, like an MTV award sort of deal. Wow. I think later in the interview, he goes, uh, what are you, uh, dating that? Eminem and she's like yeah I kind of came and went yeah he goes how'd that go and she goes yeah I came and went <laughs> yeah. yeah so I think she dated a lot of co-stars which kind of yeah. fizzled out soon after and <laughs> it sounds like it got pretty serious with Ashton yeah it, Kucher. It, Kucher, if you will it seems like it did um like I, I don't know I think Ashton was like very career oriented and mm-hmm. maybe he it was just kind of he like left it he, he kind of you know dated her a little bit after the movie but not too much soon after. I don't. <laughs> we don't. We never hear a side. That's the thing. Every time you yeah. hear a side, he's like she's a great girl. She's amazing. He's, he gives very political, diplomatic answers. Mm. He's like, I'm into older women. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Then he moves on to Demi Moore and David Letterman. She's one of his, you know, go to guests that come on and act flirty, and he yeah. loves it and makes jokes. Yeah, and... he made some kind of pretty crass jokes on this one and other ones. Did he? Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't. Can we, we hear we, it? We, we can bring up the next. I'm... I have another clip. Of... Oh, okay, let's listen to the next yeah. one. Yeah, to 2005. 2005. Yeah. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. It's wait. a pleasure to be back. You look tremendous, by the way. Thank you very much. No, wait a minute. Is your hair different, or is it my hair? It's. <laughs> It's your eyes. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> no, it's it's a, it's darker. It is than darker. the last time we saw you. M- much darker though, isn't it? You're correct. Well, you, you look wonderful <laughs> like that. <laughs> but but uh, what's that for? I mean, just a decision or what happened? God knows how to pick colors. Uh huh. Um, I always have believed if you can't change your surroundings, change your hair color. I see. This was the choice, so I did it in the summertime, and I, I kept great. it. It looks Thank fantastic. You. <laughs> My God, is that good looking? Nice Thank job you. on You're that. Sweet. Very weird. 
my God. Is Almost as good looking, looking as my intern. Yeah. 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 Did, you have a, uh, did you have a holiday uh, weekend recently? Oh, uh, I had a lovely Easter. What did Thank you do? You. How, did you have a nice? Yes, I had a very nice time. Okay, Thank good. You. I, I, well, normally we, you know, we she go, seems uh, more erratic. And stuff. We went and That's how she is in every weekend, appearance at, at anywhere. Morgan's yeah, there's a Craig Ferguson one we could put on, too. Even more so than the first one three years before this, though. Out with a friend of mine. This seems like she's on speed or something. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that was in her system. We went out at 1 a.m. In one of the Letterman interviews, I think even later, she starts talking about Simon Monjack. And yeah. she says, oh, and, you know, my husband has a British accent. Yeah. Like, yeah. she's so proud of him being British. Yeah. I think that's something she needs. I'm glad you brought it back to Simon Monjack or Conjack, some people are calling. Because he's just a very man- manipulative person. Everyone says that. Even one of the, the females that he had that relationship in the kid with wrote a letter to the FBI just to tell them basically what big, how big of a con artist he was. Even his mom said he was kind of like, she had a, a very British nice way of saying it, but saying, you know, he had his own sense of reality. Absolutely. In the documentary, it's revealed Britney's friends through an intervention. Yeah. Against Simon. They throw an intervention to say the guy you're with is horrible. Yeah. And you need to get away from him as fast as possible. And then another associate contacts the National Enquirer and says, look, I don't even want money for this story. Can you please just put this out there that Simon Monjack <laughs> is a creep? Yeah. And then the, the manager was like, um, no, no. The, the guy says, I try to contact her manager. And the manager says, she fired all of us. Her new manager is Simon Monjack. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the manager <laughs> says, by the way, I was fired for warning her about Simon Monjack. Yeah. So... I think it's she's doomed at this point with this guy. She's fenced in. Doomed. He's, he's taken Good over everything. Good way to everything. put it. Yeah, she's doomed. Do, it's doomed. And I got a new name for him. It's Demon Jack. Oh. Because he's a demon. Demon. Yeah. Um, so some of the other lies he would tell people. I forgot this one. He said he dated Madonna and Elle McPherson. That was a <laughs> whopper. Uh, he yeah, just like right. talked to people, get hammered and fucked up and just lie his fucking. Maybe he was blacked out. Or he was making them blacked out. I mean, if he has the drugs, yeah, he's able Jeez. to drug people. They're more willing to come back. Well, I'll, I'll get around to the drugs a little bit later. But yeah. so she was always kind of like loopy, kind of cuckoo a little bit. You know, she was always on a little bit of prescription drugs. Mm. But I feel like once this guy comes in the picture, it like way ramps up. And the weight didn't help. Getting so skinny. Yeah. Well, the other thing about that is she was a healthy weight and clueless. And then people started saying stuff. And one producer, I guess, said she wasn't fuckable enough to be a leading actress oh my god so that was like one thing that led her down the path of like anorexia and just like yeah not treating herself and she's working at a crazy pace she's yeah. making a yeah. movie or tv show every fucking they were year. the executives would talk like that openly yeah, to yeah this is the 90 the free free wheel in 90s where yeah. the executives would just talk shit so stupid. and it would get back and like representatives would actually tell actors like oh yeah they don't think you're fuckable enough they think your ankles are fat you know like so. it's objective yeah. And the girls had no choice but to believe it and correct it. Yeah. If they wanted to work in the business. Yeah. And it was just well known. People just outwardly speak like that. Yeah. And like it's acid. really sad because in Clueless, she looks normal. And, and yeah. then later on, she was just clearly way too skinny. She was like frail. But th- the weird thing was like she was allegedly a healthy weight for her height. But th- that's based on like the BMI index, which I don't think is is really real anyway. It's all shit. Because I'm 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 morbidly obese based off that. <laughs> oh god, I'm morbidly morbidly yeah. obese. I know. I think my doctor. I went for a physical. He's like, you're pre obese. I think that. Was, yeah. I'm like, oh, thank God, I just missed it. You're pre Monjack. You're pre Monjack. Well, Monjack is uh, Monjack is Mon. He's his own weight class. Heavyweight. Monjack. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's Marlon Brando from the island of yeah. Dr. Moreau. Yeah, he is. I think that's his body type. <laughs> Eventually, her and Monjack, you know, they would do pills. They would get fucked up at night. Um, they had this weird thing where they would just kind of do like photo shoots where he'd just take pictures of her and like yeah, various dress outfits. Her up. She bought like, she had like Michael Jackson level like shopping addiction where she had just had like fucking thousands of like pieces of clothes that she never used. If you saw her bathroom in the documentary, yeah. it looks like a fucking bomb hit it or something. Yeah. There is makeup on every surface. There's no surface where you could put anything. It's disgusting. It looks like a hoarder's apartment. Yeah, Absolutely. there's like shit 
everywhere. It's sad. And that's what is so unbelievable about the situation is she was living in that squalor. Yeah. And this is the girl that was, she was hip. She was an eight mile. It's a three she million dollar house. She was a Hollywood house actress yeah. and she's living in squalor with this guy that like there's footage of them at some premieres even at the premieres he couldn't be bothered to take a shower oh, yeah a to put on anything he looked like a constant a nice five outfit. o'clock shadow remember homer simpson he'd shave the five o'clock shadow, oh, yeah, came right back right yeah <laughs> <laughs> and not one of those cool five o'clock shadows no yeah a he, really disgusting he had like a harvey weinstein five o'clock yeah. shadow yeah ha- oh my harvey weinstein Ratso, Rizzo, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. (laughs) Just Um, a gross guy. He looked like shit. So, yeah, so he'd keep her up all night doing this bullshit, doing prescription drugs, really ramping that up. So, on December 20th, 2009, Brittany dies at Cedar sinai Hospital at the age of 32. There's some conflicting reports on where she was found, how she was found. Her mom originally stated that she found her laying on the patio, unable to catch her breath. I guess it was Simon's dumb idea to give her a cold shower first and then call the paramedics. So she was kind of like flailing around, couldn't catch her breath, told her mom she was going to die. And then Simon's idea, because he was getting a little nervous, I think, um, he decided that we have to maybe try to revive her on our own because I feel like maybe this has happened in the past. Mm. Um, So can you play the 911 call? This is way longer than I thought. Fire Department 97, what's the address of the emergency? 1895 Rising Glen Road. What's the phone number you're calling from? Three. Tell me exactly what happened. Oh, somebody's passed out. Somebody what? Oh, somebody's, my daughter's passed out. She's, she's, they're we doing mouth to mouth. Please get oh, your oh, quick, okay. please. Okay, okay. All right, we're going to. How old is your daughter? She's 30. Please she's help. She's 30? She was 32. Yes, there's someone coming. Yeah, ma'am. You don't have to yell. We're going to send somebody out there, okay? Is she awake? Please, no. Is she breathing? No. Okay, so somebody's doing mouth to mouth? Yes. Okay. It is Simon Monjack. Did somebody see what happened? No. (laughs) Okay, listen to me carefully. Is there a defibrillator available? (laughs) Is there a defibrillator available? Is there a defibrillator? Yeah, yeah. That's, it's a that's a rough nine one one. Got one in my that, backpack. That was when I was watching that documentary. I'm like, Jesus Christ, the poor yeah, mom. I've man. heard it a bunch. Yeah, I didn't realize it was eight minutes long though. Yeah, I think that's that a long where fucking they, call. She's telling Simon how to do CPR correctly, and the guy's like, and he's not you're doing not going it. fast enough, sir. Yes. And yeah. Simon's just fucking out of it. I guess he, he's they're all on drugs. Yeah, they're. I think that every single member of the family is pretty yes. fucked up. Yeah, absolutely. You can and hear they don't it in the call it drugs because they're doing prescription drugs. Yeah. Um, I, I guess what had happened. This is like what led up to the death here. On uh, November 2009, Brittany went to Puerto Rico to film this low-budget movie called The Caller, uh, which later got recast and renamed Sweet Home Alabama, if you're looking for it on IMDb. But not the Reese Witherspoon one. Not even that one. That's so weird. So press reports state that she got fired after the first day because Simon was apparently drunk on set, and he may or may not have hit someone on set. I'm not sure, 100% <laughs> oh, yeah. sure about that. I guess Simon's lawyer prodded the producers, and they called it a mutual party. But she was fired because they wanted Simon off the set. Um, that was big entertainment news when that happened. Yeah. It, like, it made her look really bad. Really bad. Yeah. I mean, she died the things that she- not that long after, but in that period before she died, it was like, that was going to be a huge blow to her career, that yeah. story. There was fired. already enough kind of hints out there that she was hard to work with. She was on pills. Like, things were not going well. Yeah. Um, was that her, the Ryan Reynolds life. one? No. No, I don't think it was any other major people in it. This is the time- She was not doing major movies anymore. During this time- She was with, in the documentary, they show her- um, and the director was like, I'm firing her because she was forgetting her lines. No, but that was a different. Yeah, but that, that was, was a different, different one. one. But he okay. kept her on that movie, he said. Yeah, he wanted on, Simon to hear that yeah, he was firing her he, yes, to keep him in line. In full earshot of Simon, yeah. which I guess you got to kind of scream it for Simon to pay attention. Yeah, because Simon was on it. set saying, I don't want her kissing anyone. And she had a romantic scene with, I believe it was Ryan Reynolds. It might it be. It was a Ryan Reynolds type. It wasn't Ryan Reynolds. Okay. Though. Yeah. And so, like, they're making out and he's pissed. So they cut and he's like, Tell them you don't want to do it. So Brittany came back and was like, I can't I I don't want to do this scene with him. Yeah. And the uh the director goes, I, I gotta get rid of Brittany because he knows Simon's standing right yeah. here. And Simon's like, Whoa, 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 we'll do whatever you want. I'll I'll talk to her. I'll talk to her. 
and then they kept her on because she was in a shaky, shaky mm-hmm. time in her career. Yeah. Like if if she got too many more of these stories, like they were gone. So it was it, getting there, you know. It was imagine how drunk you have to be in order to get your wife fired on set. And we're talking about one of the very best comedic actresses around. Yeah. She was and now she's doing like fucking schlock horror, horror movies. movies, bad romantic comedies. The Ramen really... Girl. I didn't oh, see this yeah. one. I didn't um, see that one either. It's, it's so exciting. A girl goes <laughs> to Tokyo and learns how to make ramen noodle soup. Well, this is the movie where she was on the set allegedly and met Simon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah, you're yeah. right. I cursed that movie. Yeah, so <laughs> many bad things happen, and uh, and she never learned to make ramen. So what happens is they go, they decide after this uh, this Puerto Rico trip, after they get fired, they're like, hey, we're gonna turn this into a vacation instead. So we're gonna spend eight days there. They come back, and on the plane ride back, Simon has a mild heart attack. And Brittany had to administer CPR. On the plane. On the plane, in order to revive him. And they later called it an asthma attack. (laughs) So this is what they do. A lot of stuff would happen, and they'd lie and say it was other things. Yeah, Hollywood does that anyway. Like, if people, you know, have, like, some sort of overdose, and they got to go to the hospital, they're like, they're treated for exhaustion. Yeah, they get their Mm, PR people out ahead of it. They made it back to the uh, the palatial uh, house that they had. And uh, apparently at this time, Britney's use of prescription drugs was well known in the industry at this time. Mm. So people are like, the, the word is out. Um, That's what all the gossip columnists were saying in the documentary. Yeah. So she took medication also for seizures after an incident um, on the production of 8 Mile. Um, so she was not a healthy person. No. From the get-go. No, and I think her shaky kind of uh, frame at this time kind of led to a lot of these issues. And also, Sharon and Simon brought back a flu. So they they had a flu Mm. when they got back from Puerto Rico. She was ill, too, though, from Puerto Rico, wasn't she? But she got it from them. I guess. Oh, so she, got she it from didn't them. have it right away. Gotcha. So, so they came back for a little bit of time, and then all of a sudden, Brittany, I guess, caught the flu, and then she got sick too, and it actually led to her dying. But, yeah, she had walking pneumonia. But also in her system, I guess Simon was just giving her pills left and right. She had antibiotic called Biaxin. She had migraine pills in her system, cough medicine, over the counter nasal spray, hydrocodone, which is actually uh, Vicodin, Prozac, Clonopin. Uh, aspirin. Klon- Klonopin alone will yeah. fuck you up completely. Methamphetamines oh. and uh, some anti-inflammatory called methoprendazone or something and some other thing called uh, chlorophenarine. She just had everything in her system. So they found had... more than 90 pill bottles on Simon's side of the bed alone. And he also had like an oxygen machine that he used uh, in the middle of the night or, you know, for a CPAP or something. <laughs> you can't make these characters up. Yeah, they had like everything in this... their system and in front of them. This guy is practically melting in real life. Like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from the inside out, there's like something yeah, burrowing into his body. Total complete utter disaster on her final night she's gasping for breath her lips turned blue from a lack of oxygen as her lungs filled with fluid she mm. told her mom i'm going to die but i'd said that so often her mom was like you're just being dramatic or whatever and quit playing with the blue lipstick yeah <laughs> yeah oh my God. <laughs> um she had made a doctor appointment for the following monday but she never got there obviously so Simon basically just fed her with pills. They got pills from aliases that they used called Lola Manilo was, yeah. was Brittany's That was fake a clever name. name. So they just got a bunch of stuff. And uh, uh, evidently this guy, um, they just did doctor shopping. They go to a doctor. Hey, can I get these pills? No. They went to the next one. And they just kept going down the line. Because in the U.S., in other countries, you can't really get away with this. There's no like registration. There is now for um, OxyContin, mm. but not really for anything else where they have like some designated list, like who's getting what. Hollywood's famous for that. They're called the Dr. Feel Goods. Yeah, exactly. Pill mills. So I guess there's a West Hollywood druggist or, you know, a prescription place just said, I don't want to do business with you anymore to mm. them because he kind of noticed patterns of a lot of this stuff kind of happening. And yeah. Lola has reached her limit. Yeah. <laughs> So it looks like Simon was pretty nervous that she died of drug intoxication and it was him. And that's probably why the reason for the cold shower or trying to revive her by not going to the paramedics or going to the emergency room, remember, because he didn't want to get in trouble. I guess another interesting thing was the coroner that worked on Brittany was actually the same one that worked on Michael Jackson. 
So oh, say, yeah, would have been earlier wrong. that year in the summer. Yeah, that Michael Jackson. Oh, that died. was the same and year, I, huh? And I think yeah. I think that was like still on the mind of people because they that doctor got time. Yes, and then Michael Jackson thing. So maybe that's what Simon was also thinking about if he was able to think in his state. Doesn't seem like he did a lot of thinking about things. Yeah, besides himself. So that happened. She has her funeral on Christmas Eve. Brittany Murphy has her funeral? On Christmas Eve, which is a very strange time to have a funeral. What a buzzkill. Yeah. Hey, you um, want to come to this funeral Guess what Christmas I got you Eve? for Christmas, yeah. We'll get some Denny's Tickets afterwards. To funeral, yeah. Jeez. So after she passes away, Simon and, and Sharon do like a bunch of interviews all over the place mm. talking about her dying. And then Simon also brings up some bullshit foundation that in which he can collect money from people for the Brittany Murphy foundation. Oh yeah. yeah. That um, was in the documentary as well, where Gary uh, flatter who directed her and don't say a word. He was putting together a video tribute. commemorating her. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A video tribute. Yeah. And Simon sends an email asking for money for the foundation Correct me. He first sent the thing saying, hey, we're having a memorial on this date. And then they started the foundation and they said it's going to be a night for the foundation. And then after that, he sent out another email saying, by the way, if you're coming to the memorial, it's going to cost you this much. It's a mandatory donation to the Britney Murphy Foundation. It was like thousands Murphy of foundation. dollars. Yeah. yeah. It Ridiculous. wasn't like small yeah. potatoes here. It was thousands. And then when he w- when Simon was called out for it, it d- the foundation disappeared. Yeah. The memorial disappeared. Everything. Yeah. Right. There wasn't even a memorial. Nope. So let's play Larry King interview. It's been a month since you lost her. How are you doing, Simon? How are you holding up? I don't think I am. What? I don't think either of us are. What did he say? You I don't think I am. There's, there's not enough time to... Your dreams, be they good or bad, when you wake up and I reach out to touch or hold my wife, and she isn't there. Were you there when they said she didn't make it? Uh, Three people came in, Sharon and I were holding each other, and they let us know at the same time that she's holding his hand. She hadn't made it. Yeah, Brittany Murphy's mom is holding Simon Monzak's hand during this interview. And he's got like new hair now. Like he's got like uh, you see pictures of him. Like he is losing his hair. It's kind of all coming. Oh out. yeah. But now he's got like a new like Wayne Newton uh, hairdo or yeah. something. <laughs> he borrowed William Shatner's yeah, hair piece. Yeah, exactly. We're back with uh, Simon Monjack and Sharon Murphy. Uh, you didn't want an autopsy at first. No, I did. Are you a, a religious Orthodox Jew? I was. I was Orthodox Shabbos. Jews don't want autopsies, right? It wasn't that. I mean, I, c- I could blame the religion for the easiest thing to do. There was this woman who had just lost her daughter who, who to us, it was such a shock, this pristine body that was curvy in all the right places so and the skin accident. like silk. And I, how could I say in front of her mother, cut her up? I mean, it was just I mean, what kind of insanity is that? So what did they do? The they moment. cut her up anyway. In all the, his interviews and appearances, he's talking. I'm just oh, like, I don't know what you know. Uh, Whitney uh, was, you know, it's like. Uh, let's do <laughs> the Today Show with Simon and Mom. Yeah, he he continues this kind of <laughs> yeah his tour. Was, you know, was there anything out of the ordinary with her? Uh, she had a little bit of laryngitis. Of laryngitis, yes. That was the only thing, and and yeah. she. Other than that, she was. You know, perfectly healthy. At your home, they found a lot of prescription medication. You're saying she was not using any of those no, medications? I'm saying that she used Vicoprofen for her menstrual time. And at that same time, she would have Seraphim, which is an antidepressant, for five days a month. Why was she depressed? Let me ask you about rumors of cocaine use. She was diagnosed with a heart murmur when she was a young teenager, and she was terrified of anything happening. She never did any drugs, ever. The Be- bottom line is if the she mom is cocaine, drugged. she'd be dead in a second. Did she have any kind of eating disorder? Absolutely not. You just need to go to a favorite she just restaurant, shut mom on, and speak to any waiter. Who uh, hi, I'm here to interview some waiters about uh, someone eating here. Plates of food and, and eat them all. It's, it's, it's insanity. 
for, for, for these rooms. She'd get four plates of food? Yeah, and then she'd eat them what all. What a weird eat way to all. explain yeah. it away. So you could just walk into Chateau Marmont and just start asking waiters, like, hey, how, what did this person she get? She ate too much food, if you yeah. ask me. If you ask me. Yeah, I, I wanted I some of that food for my soup. Yeah, he was eating her food, <laughs> yeah, clearly. No shit. Yeah. Eating all their food. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I had he was... something to insert, actually, before about the media stuff. Yeah. The reason for that, the big press tour, mm -hmm. was because there was intense media interest in this story, and they were showing up at the house, you know, the night she died and so on. There was, yeah. So he started conversing with a reporter there. I think the thing with him is he, he tried to um, be the center of attention at any time he could or try to elevate himself. Absolutely. So I, that's what he's trying to do here. And that's what th assist. Yes, and that's what that girl from Radar Online said in the documentary. Yeah. She knew how to deal with a narcissist, basically. Yeah, she left flowers there with a card, with her phone number, and all of a sudden he calls her and just is like, I want to talk to you about everything. And at some Would point- Would you like to tour the house? At some point, it's like way too much. She starts calling her when she's on vacation and stuff, and she, she was like, does this guy want to like- have yeah. sex with me or something but she was like you know in a committed relationship with a female so he was <laughs> yeah, really exactly. barking up the wrong tree there <laughs> uh but yeah that that tour of the house i guess was very strange that's where it's i saw the creepy. bathroom and stuff yeah yeah, yeah. That, in that tour he's just like and this oh i haven't been in the bathroom since it happened but that's where britney died right there he's like and i didn't want to touch anything or clear it up it looks like a, a hoarder's junkyard. Yeah, that's the first thing you, you do after you, uh, yeah. after you get over the shock. You start he, going. He through all of a this sudden stuff. goes in the middle of it. And he goes, "Oh, look at this jacket. This is a very nice leather jacket of hers. You see this?" And the the person cameraman is like, "Yeah, great." What was <laughs> it being recorded for? <laughs> they were doing. He was that was her good. The exclusive, the yeah. radar online yes. girl that you no, took but a I think it was to. Good Morning America. That was too. Uh, maybe no, it was, it was no. It was her. Okay, okay. She radar goes, it's online. so weird. It was so yeah. weird that he's giving me the exclusive. Yeah, because it was Radar Online, and like, why? She can't say no to this access. Oh, of course not. You know, I, there was so much he, interest. He thought he could shift it or shape what she said and how it came out and stuff. That's why yeah. he went yeah. with her. And there's a moment he picks up a photo of Brittany in the living room. There was no memorial, but he says, no. we showed this at the memorial. Do you guys remember what he described about that picture? It was something weird. I don't remember that, but I do remember the mom in him. With some picture with Brittany down below where they're next to each other. Mm. And there's a picture of Brittany. They almost look like someone says like a mom and dad. Yeah. yeah their kid is Brittany. It's very right. strange. The the funny thing about him, or not funny, it's very sad. Like he spent <laughs> let's see. He spent Test me. <laughs> three million dollars of her money in three years. Yeah. So right. she she was, you know, she's not making $20 million a movie. They, it, that is already going away, and she's not really doing that. He is just blowing her money on you. He's paying for his kids overseas to go to school and shit. And he's paying for to go to Chateau Bermond, you uh, know, to dinner every night. That's what I thought of when you were talking about the mom seeing what she could get for the jewelry. Yeah. And finding out it was worthless. Not only did she end up with that worthless jewelry, but yeah, he cleaned Britney out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and mom so was left with nothing. Nothing. Just the house and the pension. Well, all of a sudden, five months later, after all these weird interviews and stuff are done, on May 23rd, 2010, Simon Monjack drops dead at the uh, at the same property. Finally, a good part to this story. Yeah. <laughs> Not soon enough. If you were looking for the good part of the story, here it is, baby. So his official death was pneumonia also, which is really weird. Um, I guess he had told people in the past that he had a leaky heart valve. Not only was he kind of out of shape and like older, but he also had like ongoing heart issues yeah, and just stuff. Just plug it up with some shock cartilage. <laughs> yeah. That was shocking about Britney's death certificate as well, that it was listed as pneumonia yeah. when there were all these other drugs involved. Well, I, this is my theory. I think because they, their immune systems were so battered down, hers was, his was, they were just like together, like Sid and Nancy, just treating their bodies very badly. Yeah. And then it allows like the flu. You can die from the flu if like you're really in If you're like, run down, yeah. If you're really run down. A yeah. very unromantic, greasy Sid and Nancy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, yeah, official cause of death, pneumonia. Yeah, they were saying, like, when she was doing the autopsy, that she took pieces of the lung and she put it in water, and your lung tissue is supposed to float, and hers just immediately sank. Yeah. that's And his, too. Like, that's how bad that their pneumonia was. Well, I'll get yeah. to I'll get to the other theories late, in, a, in a bit. Not too much later. I'm trying to near <laughs> the end here. But, yeah, that his toxicology, he had... Uh, 
Celexa, Cymbalta, Desriel. I feel like they, they make up more prescription just for Simon. Just for that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Valium, Ativan, all these other anti-anxiety drugs. Also Vicodin, Lyrica, Tylenol, and a drug called Indorol. Yeah, End I, it all. <laughs> end it all, Mike. So yeah, I think all these things kind of added up. And it still seemed pretty odd that he died also. Now, the father, Angelo Bertolotti, comes yeah. back into the picture around Mr. this time. Bertolotti. Mr. Mr. Bertolotti. Mr. Bertolotti. Um, and also half-brother Anthony Bertolotti. Mr. Anthony. Bertolotti, Mr. Bertolotti. In order to insert themselves with some wild QAnon-like theories as to what happened with Brittany and her husband, Simon. So the, the, one of the theories, he said there was a drug debt that they owed from shadowy deals. And he even claimed that her own mother was sharing a bed with Monjack, which they were, actually. Yeah. And he was kind of saying there was some relationship there. Yeah, with Monjack and with Sharon. With Monjack and Sharon. Brittany's mom would crawl into bed with Simon. She admitted after to After Brittany it. died, yeah. 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 And they would hold each other. But he that's the... the oh, that's God. the low... That was like, you know, the tip of the iceberg. He said also that there was like the U.S. government might have taken them out too. Uh, he did an interview with this... Well, that's insane. I No. He did. It he, he sounds like Michael Shannon from Bug. He, yeah. he got he got um in January 2012, he sued in order to get hair and tissue samples so he could get tests done. And he got these tests done of her hair. And they, they came back with like 10 certain metals or something that could be part of what, rat poison. But the coroner said, no, that was from her hair dye and stuff. And it wasn't stuff uh, that came from her blood. Mm. So hair samples aren't really that reliable when it comes to something like that. He also went on Good Morning America in CNN to say that Britney was poisoned and that he had evidence. I guess the coroner declined to reopen the case because he wanted the body exhumed or something. Yeah. In another investigation done. But he brought on this woman called Julia Davis. And this is important because she was like um, a former Department of Homeland Security employee who said that Britney was her friend and supporter and that Britney was killed by either the U.S. or Saudi Arabian government because Julia reported a suspected Al-Qaeda attack with terrorists coming over the U.S.-Mexico border. She reported this to the FBI. Brittany uh, Murphy did? No, this is or, Julia, Julia Davis. Oh, Ju- okay. So the I was reason like, wait, that, what? But the reason why Brittany <laughs> yeah. and Simon were killed is because they associated with Julia, and uh, Brittany was a supporter. So they were afraid that uh, she'd get the word out yeah, but, Julia but, was a f- personal friend of theirs? Allegedly. Okay. And the dad, Angelo, did an interview with Julia. Today, new shocking allegations coming from her father, who says she was poisoned. And Murphy's father, Angelo Bertolotti, and family friend Julia Davis are joining us now from Los Angeles. To the both of you, thank you so much. I know this is difficult. I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, We appreciate you being with us because this is really shocking to a lot of people, hearing that you believe that she was poisoned. Uh, Mr. Baudelotti, why do you believe that? Why why do you think that she was poisoned? Well, it's it's very suspicious, and I read the reports on the uh, the toxicology reports, and everything sounds very, very, very... uh, more or less. Boy, he uh, sounds out of it too. I thought he was going to have a very succinct argument. Well, and he just, uh, 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 yeah, just kind of yeah. crunch his way I through this. Him, Simon, and Sharon Julia, are pieces of work. Specific in those reports that they should have started a choir. Yeah, Brittany's like the breakout star. Causes? Yes, from the very beginning, AJ always uh, believed that there was something very odd about Brittany's passing and then reviewing autopsy reports we could see that there were multiple symptoms that would usually go with poisoning. And then the test results confirmed that where the lab found uh, 10 heavy metals in very high quantities. So we do believe that it was poisoning and we would like to- But the hair dye makes uh, sense. Properly investigate it. This is Julia Davis's uh, connection. The (laughs) the truth is no longer a secret. This is the YouTube videos you know are just bad. They call this the dark web. Yeah. Department of Homeland Security wasted millions the, the, of dollars the, the on retaliatory actions of Julia Davis. Julia Davis uh, is a, a lot situation of historical text. significance. So I think it'll set a precedence that they'll be talking about it, perhaps in law schools and, and political science classes, maybe 100 years. They're at a sanitarium now. right now interviewing the patients. So <laughs> what would happen to us in real life? I think 
this is my theory, that she's bringing this into it to get more attention to her fucking case. Probably. Of course. I, I think that's exactly what's going on. They killed her because I stood up to the government, yeah. so they took her out. And people and she like, probably what? just like called out sick too many times, and that's why she was getting fired, <laughs> and she br- she brought on some other bullshit excuse why yeah. they were letting her go. Yeah, I think she she might be an opportunist here. You well, think? Yeah. <laughs> but it, she was friends with the dad, not with The Brittany. dad. Well, the dad started an entire Twitter account, and he started going after people that were doing movies about Britney, because uh-huh. Lifetime did a Br- did a oh, very yes. bad Britney Murphy oh, one. Oh, it was so bad. Um, and then he started going after people like that. I actually, and they cast this guy to try to capture yeah. Simon's creepiness, and yeah. he wasn't quite <laughs> there. Kyle, do, do we have the clip, the last one, Lifetime movie that Britney... Murphy story. Yeah. Cheryl and Fenn played the mom from Twin Peaks. Oh, really? Why. I'm Brittany Murphy. She was America's sweetheart. Oh, this is horrible. Everyone at school is watching your show. I freaking got it. Clueless. I'm going to be in a real <laughs> movie. A star. Oh, what about all this Oscar buzz? <laughs> I don't even know what to say. On the rise. This is like worse than a student film. Yeah, I think it cost them a whole two hundred dollars to make. Item offset too. Don't believe everything you guys publish. (laughs) (laughs) Come down. Oh yeah, the Aston Kutcher guy with (laughs) all the tabloids know you're here. I see. They're not your friends. They're not your friends. Hiding inside of you. That's the Britney I want. This poor slob. He's way too know, classy in this Yeah, version. he was way too good. We don't need her anymore. She's been replaced. My agents, they're dropping. It's over. It's over. A tragic Hollywood story. What are you, a reporter? No, no comment. Why won't they leave me alone? What do you want? Huh? I'll never leave your side. The chick looks Robert nothing Price like Brittany Murphy. <laughs> nothing. Sweetie, we nor need to sounds, nor accents. You like, sound like Angela because that's what Angela is. said. <laughs> in the lives it destroyed. Brittany, I have some tea for you. Oh my God, Simon! <laughs> Amanda Fuller, Sherilyn Fenn. Amanda Eric Fuller, Peterson, who you will never Peterson. hear from again. Simon, what's she's you? horrible in this movie. Well, she, she and Angela Bertolani had some beef on, on Twitter. You all killed her. <gasps> Did you, you hear that at the end, Simon? The car- killed her. Yeah, getting dramatic. Well, that was his, that's what he thought. He thought Hollywood system killed her, you know. That's making or his him ninety prescription bottles. Yeah. yeah, or their weird hoarder dungeon they lived in. Yeah, yeah. it was a drug den. All three a of them drug were doing den. Dun- drugs. Exactly. It's all. Yeah. It was. So Angelo went after them, saying, "I am disgusted and outraged that Lifetime decided to produce such a trashy project." Which you know, kind of accurate. <laughs> yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> he defiled the memory of my beautiful, talented daughter, Brittany Murphy. Frankly, I'm amazed at their audacity of calling it a true story without conducting any research or consulting <laughs> with any. <laughs> members of the family. He probably want to have like, you know, like Jason Bourne type story in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So he called Amanda Fuller, the actress, atrocious. Not wrong. Now that I think about it. Yeah. I think he was kind of in the right on this one. So Tony, the brother got involved too. Quote from Tony was, would I dig that Sharon? I don't know why he said that. Would I dig that Sharon would murder her own daughter? Absolutely not. I know people are saying that, but I know Sharon. I don't like her, but personally... Sharon would have given up her life for her daughter, but they didn't want hers. So <laughs> they didn't want hers. What does they, that mean? He's talking about they. He's saying this is bigger than Sharon. He said the U.S. government or other nefarious people are the ones that killed Brittany and Simon. What brother? Whose brother is this now? This is uh, her ha- Brittany's half brother, Angelo's son, and he got involved in all this shit. He also said that uh, the deaths were connected to Monjack's business dealings. You never know. Obviously, I believe the coroner that these were actual accidental deaths. I do, too. It, it's clear they they just did a lot of drugs and they were codependents and they were not healthy people. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't they kill Julia Davis? Why would they kill? I know. And- two friends. I think to that, send Julia Davis a message, yeah. and then the the to, Tony said you. at some point you have to go back to the money. Jimi Hendrix died. The money kept flowing for many many years afterwards. Sometimes an actress is just worth more dead than alive. <laughs> These people, a are lot just of people dead. are the ramen girl residuals. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that ramen girl paychecks. So anyway, that's that's all that with the father, and he's crazy, clearly. He died a couple of years later. Oh, he did? Yeah, he died January of 2019 at the age of 92. 
Whoa. Yeah. Is it a murder? Um, he was only. <laughs> they took him out. Uh, it wasn't COVID. <laughs> so I want to go in a little detail about the house. Uh, this house okay. was built by Madonna, sold to Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake, then sold uh, to Britney Murphy. Apparently, Britney Spears um, had an otherworldly encounter and never went back and sold it to Britney Murphy in 2003. Oh, saying, so she's been nuts for a while. Saying it was a curse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, which makes sense, actually. You're not allowed to say she's nuts anymore. Uh, have you seen her Instagram? <laughs> Uh, this house is that? sick. How, uh, okay. I'm so, looking at it on Zillow right now. So just to say... That's the same hoarder this house? This house is weird. Brittany thought it was haunted. Brittany uh, Spears thought it was haunted also. And also, there's a big mold theory in this house. That's yeah. the other thing I wanted mm, to bring up. Yes. So it seems like Simon's mother pushes this very hard. Her, I guess her husband is a builder. Simon's father-in-law, I guess that would have been, said um, the mold... Could have been breathed in by Brittany and Simon, causing you know, leading to their deaths. But I was wondering, why isn't the dog dead? Why isn't Sharon dead? You know, mm. yeah, we're, black we're, mold is really bad for you. I guess so, but I don't know really know that much about it. I guess the Department of Health looked at it and said it was fine. Brittany, uh, Brittany's mom, Sharon, said it was fine, but then when she wanted to sue. She said it wasn't fine, but then she just sold the house, and the house was eventually demolished. Oh, wow. And uh, and I guess they got rid of all the black mold, and uh, it's an entirely different. Oh, house that's now. why the house looks so different. <laughs> oh yeah, I was gonna say Kyle's looking at pictures of the house online, and it looks Amazing. awesome, yeah, clean and modern. And I'm like, that's the same house that was the yeah. drug den. Yeah. Eleven point six million dollars, five beds, eight point five baths, ninety four hundred square feet. You'd have to tear that place down after Simon Monjack terrorized the even space. If, even if he just stepped one foot in it. Oh. Day. <laughs> just the energy. This house is done now. Yeah. It's worse than paranormal activity, the energy where he walks and yeah. sleeps. But yeah, that's basically it. It was very sad and the the weird sordid story. The dad was a weirdo. Who and wasn't around then. Yeah, never around. Never in her life. And until she started making a couple bucks, and then yeah, he started course. like wanting to be around. He claims I'm out of prison now. That he paid for Sharon and Brittany. Was he like a chef boy RD? Yeah. <laughs> he, he he paid for Brittany and her mom to move to LA. And he's like, "What do you think they got that money selling Tupperware?" <laughs> uh, and, oh yeah, they moved to LA after the, she was doing all those school productions. Yeah, because she became bigger than New Jersey. She outgrew said. New Jersey. She yeah. outgrew, outgrew New Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah. And that's when they went to the West Coast, and she became a star in Clueless. Yeah. Um, they also said during her autopsy that um, she was severely anemic. They tested her hemoglobin and like her iron or whatever, and a normal level is supposed to be around twelve to thirteen. Hers was three. So she said, minus the pneumonia, minus all the drugs, the anemia, how severe it was, was enough to kill her on its own. So the fact that she had the uh, eating disorder on top of that, plus the pneumonia, plus the drugs, is a recipe for disaster. Yeah, yeah I, I think reading up on it, it's like nauseating. I, I was going through all this information, all these theories, different stories. Everyone's mm. got their own thing. I think when in like the, the haze of superstardom yeah. and stuff, people just kind of lose track of that, what's actually real. And when you bring <laughs> in a liar like Simon Monjack, it just really further confuses everything. Yeah, exactly. I had never heard that Department of Homeland Security thing. It's That's crazy. Insane. <laughs> There's an article I just pulled up right now that says uh, the, the headline is, the allegations that Brittany Murphy and her husband were murdered are starting to make some weird sense. <laughs> yeah. And it goes into the whole thing about the Department of Homeland Security. and yeah how uh, Julia Davis was a whistleblower who sued the DHS for wrongful imprisonment. And they think that, you know, the FBI Joint Force Ter Joint Terrorism Task Force could have taken her out. <laughs> it's wow. just, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think just people, when they see a little bit of uh, opportunity, they just jump into it. Yeah. And he's been a grifter his entire life. Yeah, it sucks. She was just around all these people that were just parasites. Yeah. Yeah. They all wanted a piece of her. And sometimes, you know, people just fall into that and they can't get away from the people who were uh, using them and manipulating them the entire way. That's why I know it's brutal. Br Brittany did not have one responsible person really no. just kind of 100% looking out for her that wasn't a manager or something like managers they'll take you so far you know as, as far as looking out for you and stuff but they're mm -hmm. not gonna on a day-to-day -day basis make sure that you're making good decisions and not bringing in bad people in yeah. your life can you imagine how bad it must have been that the fact that Hollywood producers were the ones telling her that 
you know, you need to change things because yeah. these people are bad. And she's getting yeah. shit from everywhere. The same producers that said she wasn't fuckable enough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's how bad and it got the that they, they're though? the good guys. Yeah. These animals. But she was failed on many levels. That really sucks. I think also I was telling someone else this that like the wanting for superstardom is kind of like a mental disease for, yeah. for a lot of people. Sure. It's just not good for you. You know, you're never going to get out of it what you originally wanted. And I think that's what Brittany was kind of understanding. That's why she just wanted a family and just to get married and to get away from it. Yeah. Because she wanted to move to New York. Uh, she wanted to leave that fucking bad mansion, mm. leave Hollywood and mm -hmm. like do small movies in New York or do Broadway again. And I think she just wanted away from it. And I think she was trying to set herself on that path. But Simon just weighed down her entire life. And yeah, that's not going to make the money that Simon wants. It's brutal. And, yeah. And he, he was, ended her life. Meeting him was fateful for her. Her, her yeah. saving him on that plane signed her own death warrant. How yeah. fucked up is that? I blame the ramen girl. The they, yeah, they wouldn't have met without the ramen girl. Oh, yeah. Maybe. But he allegedly met her. I think he had met her years when before. She was a Not the teen thing, but I think they just knew each other. But they just told these stories. I was very patient. Everyone in Hollywood just tells these stories that sound so much better than real life. Yeah. She probably found I survived 9-11. I cured my <laughs> cancer with shark cartilage. It's all these fucking people are full of shit. <laughs> yeah. And everything in between those two crazy stories. Steve Ranazizi's on the death and entertainment shit list, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're on, pal. I'm never watching uh, whatever that show was. The League. The League, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I don't like that show. Yeah. A lot of people did. Any final thoughts, guys? That was my final thoughts. Yeah, and you you meant it. <laughs> the documentary entertaining has a lot of interesting things as we've gone through already. Mm. Some things that annoyed me though are they kept cutting to these YouTubers. Yeah. And two of them, not just one but two, apply makeup while they're giving their theories about Britney Murphy. I think that's their gimmick. Well, yes, what, their what double they're, up. What they're trying to show there, I feel like is like this is like the absurdity of, you know, the the current society or we live in with um YouTubers and, you know, people like Perez Hilton that just he even admitted it, that he didn't give a shit about her as a person when yeah, he was course. reporting on it. Um, yeah, they're sleazes. They're sleazes, but the movie, the documentary pretends to be talking about it but they're really doing the same thing yeah that's what i'm saying they, yeah and they cut back to them so often though like they're a talking head in the documentary yeah and they make sure to show that you can see the scroll bar at the bottom that it's youtube yeah it's just hack it's a hack documentary and i think hbo is better than that or, sh or not used to lately be. used to be yeah <laughs> they've, they've had a few hack documentaries yeah. this year i mean it's not as bad as the lifetime Movie, no the lifetime movie. I actually want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should live stream it. Oh yeah, yeah. one of these days. Good idea. That's yeah. a good idea. The other say. thing that bothered me too about the documentary is using all those out of context clips that are yeah. unlabeled from Brittany Murphy's career to show her state of mind at the time. I thought you were gonna say that's what I, I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> and like the, the the part one of the documentary ends with Brittany in a fragile state, so they keep repeating her lines from don't say a word yeah i'll never tell yeah the, i'll never tell and it goes hack. like five or six times of her saying it repeating it yeah. and i'm like okay we get it uh yeah. besides that though it was entertaining and yeah it was entertainment it was sad with the mom the mom i felt bad for she now lives in somewhere in southern california on her own i think no one knows exactly where she is i, I guess don't she... feel bad for the mom at all really but she was doing the drugs too like she didn't have a man man she... you ain't got no man you ain't got no man <laughs> uh I don't know. I, I she could have no, but I felt for it in put that, her on a in better that path. voice on the nine one one call. It all came to her at that moment. I fucked up. Yeah, it all came to her like this is all my fault, really. Yeah, I think it is. And then Simon's just like he's trying to do the CPR. What do I do? Yeah, they're going one, two, three, four, and he's going one, two. As his CPR, like that's yeah. him pressing. I think he it's was like just a broken idiot. person after his dad died. You know, I, I'm not going to make up anything, you know, that we should feel bad for him. But no, he's a sociopath. He, yeah, he turned it into a very bad thing and he turned it into a shitbag and just a bit, very tragic story. Yeah, and the mom, Sharon, clung to him because, very sadly, that's all that remained of Britney's life oh, after she died. Oh, that's the only family the mom had Simon left, really? Simon Monjack guy. 
The mom had no other family, really. He controlled Britney and he controlled the mom. You can yeah. see it in the Larry King interview. Yeah. He finishes her sentence. Well, he I, interrupts I, her. I'm glad you brought that up because at one point in the Larry King interview, he goes, well, she told me a couple of days before that she felt very ill. And he's like, no, no, no she didn't. She didn't. Dog. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't. Dog. She didn't say that. You're wrong. You're misremembering. Oh, and like, yeah, because that fucked up his narrative. Yeah, exactly. After she just started feeling like shit that day. Today, show too, he did the same thing interviewing her saying like, no, no, she was, she wasn't ill at all. She had a little bit she had of severe pneumonia. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Bullshit. And everything's mumbling with this guy. Yeah. But how do I deal with it? Like, what? He's just like, uh, fucking. Day at a time. Yeah, one day at a time. I looked. I when look. in reality, he's like, I'm fucking a mother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, I can't get past that. I already said this. This girl that was an eight mile. Yeah. Sin City, vibrant screen actress, so powerful in movies like Girl Interrupted. Girl Interrupted was the best role she did. I think she got an Oscar nomination. She didn't, but she, she did. deserved one. She did because it was, it was very true to her. It felt like not, be, I don't know, not exactly, but just kind of like you know, not out there, but she was kind of kooky like that. She could play the, the hell out of that yes, role. Yeah. yeah, and they cast the right person. Definitely. Going from that eight mile it girl and becoming this frail yeah. person. I noticed that the girl that he was with in London in 99, she was in a similar spot where she was sick. She was like dying or something. That's how he wanted him. And, and then her friend was like, no, fuck that. And she shut up and goes, if you don't take her to the hospital, I am. And then mm. that's that's it. And Brittany didn't have those people in her life. Right, exactly. Not but, at all. So, he threw her by in design. the shower. By her. design. He's like, by yeah, that, that's a good idea. Yeah, let's. Uh, if you're dying right now, why not just give you a quick shower and see if, how, if that changes anything? Yeah. yeah, I think he took life saving tips from William Shatner. <laughs> that's what my no, my grandfather would say that. I remember my my uncle. He, my mom told me the story. Where my uncle broke all the toes in his foot, <laughs> and, my, and my uncle told him to take a cold shower. <laughs> oh. God, that'll and heal you right up. It's so crazy. Yeah. Like yeah, she's pe- dead. Throw her in the off. shower. Throw in the shower. Yeah, yeah. that'll revive her. <laughs> yeah. Then Brittany's suddenly like, "Oh my God, that was yeah. wow! I'm glad <laughs> you, <laughs> glad you that suggested was a rush. that." Yeah, it feels so much better. <laughs> let's go see Avatar. Let's go play some basketball. Yeah, let's that's what <laughs> people say to sober you up too. If you're too drunk, take a cold shower. Yeah, you'll a cup wake of up. Coffee. Yeah, yeah. It's bullshit. Total bullshit. Get out of a cold shower and immediately drive into a fucking. <laughs> Yeah. Wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I took a cold shower. <laughs> hey, Jock. <laughs> yeah. Blood spurting out of the neck. <laughs> but I took a cold shower. This is like the a commercial for cold showers <laughs> we're doing. I think we need to remember Brittany away from the frail years. Remember her as that vibrant person, you know, that yeah. lit up screens. But she also was a singer. Yeah, yeah. She did a song with Paul Oakenfold. Oh, yeah. In she, the mid 2000s. Can you play a little of it? Can we actually, we can play that out because I got to go to the bathroom. Do that. <laughs> Is she making these noises with her mouth like the guy from Police Academy? Yes. <laughs> like Bismarcky. Oh yeah, this is this will, this is this will get me going in the yeah. club. I don't remember this at all. Nobody does. Which I guess is good. I don't know why we're reminding people that this exists. <laughs> <laughs> because we're talking about Brittany Murphy. <laughs> This is like a something you play while you're driving down Sunset Boulevard and just yeah. like driving right into the On water. Ecstasy. <laughs> yeah, right, right off the pier into the water playing this. So anyway, it's just, you know, sad. She goes from this to that. It's, oh, is this the good? Forget the, yeah, I don't, can't. Where are you coming out with that? What? Where do you, I thought this was the bad. She's working with Paul Oakenfold. He yeah. was the top DJ. At that time. Well, we're saying she could do it all. Paul Oakenfold yeah. is. Yeah. Good. Good for you. Anyway. <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> well, she's, she's. He discovered Lady Gaga. Yeah. No. President of the fan club over here. Yeah, like Julie Davis of the uh, Britney Spears. <laughs> but no, Britney Spears. No, but this like, is like the go-getter. She was a Hollywood star, and then she she's did it pr- all. pursuing music. She 
hooks up with this famous she DJ. Did every, she and, did it all. Yeah, and you know she's alive here. She and was then a multi a couple years later. She's in bed with Simon Monjack doing pills. That's Hollywood for you. Ain't it a bitch? Ain't it a bitch? Oakenfold is also British. Oh. Okay, Aye. so she had a thing for Brits. Yeah, sure did. That's all I got. Let it be known. <laughs> I think I think we need to end this. End this. Uh, yeah. Well, um, I have to go to the bathroom. That was Brittany. Okay, Murphy, that's the very TMI. Story. TMI. I'm Rest gonna, in peace, we, Brittany Murphy. Yeah, we got to take a cold shower after I go to the Mark bathroom. Mark is acting like Simon Monjack all of a sudden. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, classless no class follow us on instagram on youtube we throw a bunch of stuff up there that's yep. relevant to yeah. everything that we talk Twitter about Twitter at dipod 2021 everything else is just at death in entertainment thanks for listening you yeah. later bye you have just heard a true hollywood murder mystery i have never seen anything like this before Movies, Broadway, music, television, all of it. A place that manufactures nightmares. Okay, everybody, that's a wrap. Good night. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. 